Hello, hello, hello everyone. It is Teresa from Teresa Silhouettes Pop for All Things Art, where I love sharing art from my heart and teaching creatives and crafters how to paint for fun and profit. So welcome to the Sunflower Basket Bicycle um, Kit Tutorial. Okay, we're going to get started. I have my, um, this is an 11 by 14 canvas. I have my tracer traced on here already. You can do that a number of ways. Um, you can even freehand it, that's totally up to you. And I have my paints out. I have white, gray, brown, black, a linen that I'm going to make because I only added a little like a tan, a coffee color, and yellow. So you guys ready? We will get started. Let me change my camera. There we go. So I have out a liner brush and a small flat brush. And the first weird thing we are gonna do is work on our background. And I'm making this little linen color. If you have the kit, um, you have the linen color. I need to make a little bit of this linen color. So I am mixing my paint over here, okay? And I'm just going in and I'm pulling down or up some of these strokes for the background. Okay, coming up here. I like to pull down from the corners. And we're going to cover the entire background by doing this. And you can do as much or as little as you want, okay? Some of this will get painted over, obviously. And so for now, and I'm gonna wash my brush, I'm gonna go back in here, I'm gonna pick up the white, and now I'm going to fill in everything with white that I didn't hit with the tan, okay? Or the linen color. I didn't even wash my brush. Sometimes I'm going over what I painted and sometimes I want nice fresh white. So I'm just pulling down. I wanna give a little bit of an outline here. I like to outline. So now when I'm pulling up my white, this makes a mental barrier for me. So I know, or I can try not to go past that mark. It's okay if I get into my basket a little bit or the top of my flowers rather. It's okay, but if we don't have to, um, it's fine. So as I use up the white in my brush, you can see the um, tan is starting to come through a little bit. I'm going around my tire, but I want my brush strokes to all remain vertically, so I'm gonna go over them a little bit here with some pulls. So yes, as I use up the white that goes on the tip of my brush, I'm getting back into a little bit of the tan linen color, and that's okay. We couldn't do this exact background if we tried, um, but it is a unique background, and you can even do this with other colors. So I'm gonna come in here. If I go over my lines for my spokes, that's okay. You will still be able to see them, and I need some more white. Now, if you have parts that you think are just too tan, and they're jumping out at you, don't go by mine, because what you see on the screen, unfortunately, is a little bit different than what I show um, by looking at my canvas from where I'm painting right here in person. But if you hold up your canvas and you see a couple of spots, and I'll just pick this one for example, and you think they're a little dark, just take your white and lighten them up. And that's it. Okay. And I think in here, we had a little bit one color, so. And I forgot these lines. Gotta have something holding on our basket, right? There we go. 
Okay, so now I'm going to wash my brush. And we're going to move on to some black. And this is all like the preliminary. This is all the base coating. And you will see as we progress, our um, artwork starts to change. It starts to really take shape and come to life. So I just picked up a little bit of black and I'm doing the base coat on my basket with some black. And I'm using the larger of the two brushes that you guys have. Depending on how you feel, you could probably do this whole entire picture with one brush. Hmm. But I like to give the line a brush too because some people feel more comfortable painting with a smaller brush. And that's it. So just base coating that and then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start base coating in my tire. And again, mental barrier here. I'm going in and I'm bordering off my tire. That's it. And then I will fill it in. Again, this side now. And it's always okay if you happen to get some on the rails or the pipework of your bicycle, it's fine. In this particular project, our bike is gray anyway. And if we get a little black where we didn't mean to, it's all okay. Okay, now I'm not even going to wash my brush again and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna pick up some gray. And I still have the black on my brush and that's okay because we wanna add this gray color to the top. And if you see, I'm only doing like the top half of my rails and then I'm gonna get a little more gray. And then here I'm doing the front part of this part of the bicycle rail. Because we're gonna do a little shading in here. And we want where the sun hits. You can tell when I'm trying to do a straight line, I have to um, talk less or talk slower, sorry. Where the sun hits is gonna be lighter. Let's do our seat. And where the back hits, I mean where the back is, it's gonna be less um, bright. So now I'm gonna go back to my black, still didn't wash my brush, and I'm going to go in and I'm going to do the bottom parts of the bicycle. And kind of like blend that in there. If it starts to get too blendy, just pick up a little bit more of the gray so the top part is a little bit lighter than your bottom part. Okay, so I'm just adding black and then I'm going in and blending where the two meet, where the gray and the black meet because you don't want such a stiff straight line. Get a little bit more gray in here. And there we go. And you'll notice if you've painted with me before, or if this is your first time, I tend to move my project around a lot. I would much rather um, turn my project than contortion my hand. Okay. So I'm going to come in here with a little bit of black. I'm going to add some black underneath the seat. Sometimes... Like here, I got a little too dark. I'm just getting a little bit more light up in there. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna wipe off my brush. I'm gonna go back into the black. And I'm gonna use, you can use your liner brush for this, or if you fix your brush, you don't want any crazy hair on your brush. 
if you fix your brush by putting a little bit of pressure on it where the paint is, use your brush up on the chisel edge. You can draw fairly straight lines that are thin enough for your bicycle spokes. Then we get some more black here. And although we're not at this, we don't have the center of our bike here, we want all of them to go towards the center, obviously. Okay. So we have that. Now I'm going to wash my brush. And now at this part again, if you wanted to use your liner brush or stick with the brush that you have, that's totally fine. We're going to get out a little bit of white. And I'm just going to start highlighting the top of my tire. Some of it will come down in here and I'm using a very light touch. I have nice fresh white, but I'm using a very light touch and I'm following the shape of the tire. Little curve there. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing up here on our bicycle poles. A little bit of white up here. Add in some highlight there. Highlight this side. We're adding the highlight to the lighter part of our bicycle. Some white, pull down. And then this one a little bit, this crossbar. Okay. And if you want, if your spokes came a little dark or fat, just by going back over them with a little bit of white, highlights them and thins them up. There we go. Okay. All right. Washing my brush again. Washing my brush again. All right, I'm going to go back to our basket. Okay. This time we're going to use our light tan. So I'm going to make a little bit more than that. So it would be our linen and our brown. So I'm going to pull, get a little bit of white, put it over here, and get a little bit more of this. This is, um, I think it's cafe latte. I called it coffee, but that's okay. And we're just going to mix it up here. And now we want to get a little bit of brown. And we want both colors on our brush. And the first thing I'm going to do is outline our basket with having both of these colors on my brush. It does not have to be perfect. There. Okay. And then we'll have both of these covers, colors. I'm just going to go in and I'm going to start doing swishes. I want a little bit more dark in there. And these get staggered. So wherever you put the top ones, see I'm doing like every other. I have to fit something in there. I'm going to use my brush in the different angle. So then you come in here with this and you split the ones that you just put in there. Okay. And again, we're going to go up here. A little more paint. So you don't want to do straight lines right across your basket. You want it to look woven. So the next row is going to be all in between your first row. Okay. A lot of our baskets are going to be covered, so we're not going to completely worry about it so much. But we do want there to be a basket in the background. 
I'm adding a little bit more highlights, I mean a little bit more shading to the tops of some of my weaves. So you can tell more that they're staggered. And then I'm going to wipe my brush off. And I'm just going to pick up a little bit of white and go in here and add now white just every so often to our basket. There we go. Okay. Alrighty then. How's everybody doing? I love the colors and I love this springy design. Okay, so now that we have that around there, we're going to use, oh, I didn't put out my green. Oopsie. Green and brown. And I'm going to put both of them on my brush at the same time, like we just did for the basket. And I'm going in here, and I'm just slip slapping, that's a technical term, around the flowers. If you get it where your flower centers are, that's okay. I tend to, when I, um, and you guys might have noticed, my flowers look a little small because when we start to paint our elements, they grow as we try to fix them. So when I'm first doing elements, eyes, features, whatever, I will trace them on smaller than they are because I know that as I start painting, oh, it's not round, oh, it's not oval, oh, it's an odd, odd shape. Before you know it, it's twice the size that it was supposed to be. So that's it. So I just mixed it in there. Don't worry right now about how yours look. All of this is going to be covered up. And like I said, your painting has to go through stages. Oh, I got a little bit of, I'll get that off. Before it all of a sudden comes together, you start adding all the details, the endings. And before you know it, I'm not even washing my brush. Before you know it, it's like, oh, I did that. So now I'm going to start pulling in, and I want again, I don't want to have bed head, so I'm putting a little bit of pressure on my brush. You want your brush to be nice and neat. Can you see how nice and neat my brush is? If you need to practice this on a piece of um, scrap paper, that's totally fine. And I'm going in here, and I'm going to pull out some fronds. We're going to be adding some greenery to the back of our um, picture. Give it some height. And we want these in the background. That's why we're doing them now. And they can be all different heights and all big heights, little heights, fat, skinny. Okay? And as, while we do that, we're going to come in here and we're going to pull in some grasses as well. Up in here. I want to get a little brown on my brush. I'm doing very small strokes with the green and the brown. And we get some more paint. And I'm just pulling in and these crisscross and pull up, get a little bit more brown. And we're just adding these again. It's setting our fronds in for our leaves. And just adding in more height and more of the background to our painting. And we want to do that all around. Sometimes I will go like this. And this might be easier for you. So you can try this, turn yours upside down, and pull. A little brown. 
And we're not worrying about the coverage because we still have to add our flower petals. And there's going to be quite a bit of overlapping in here. A little more paint, brown, green. Okay. Some of mine are longer on this side, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to lengthen some in here as well. And you're only going to see the tips of these. Again, you have to go through stages. You're only going to see the tips of these. So we're not going to really um, worry about that. Okay. So I'm sticking with the green. And I'm going to start adding some leaves to our fronds. And this is just a push and a pull. Push down and pull, push down and pull. We want a diagonal, so we're going to line our brush up diagonally and then we're going to pull. Okay? I like to start on the end and we're just going to squish our brush and pull, put it on a diagonal, squish and pull, and work our way around all of these fronds that we have out. You can make it thicker. I don't want to run out of paint. You can make um, your leaves thicker, tighter. You can put one in there if you want. It's totally up to you. I thought that one was kind of far away. I like this look, and so I'm going to keep mine just as sparse as I have them here. I'm just squishing down my brush and pulling up and you will see your brush will spring up. Okay, I'm working my way around. I like to start on the top and work my way around. And so my brush is always at an angle to the stem and I'm squishing it and pulling it. Squishing it and pulling it. And I'm going to keep working. Again, if this is something, um, the beauty of having the video is that you can hit pause whenever you want. You can get out some scrap paper. And you can try these first. You can try getting a light touch to do your spokes down here. You can practice your light touch to pull your stems. You can practice squishing your brush and pulling out for these leaves on these um, stalks that we have here. And then just hit play again and come back to your artwork. This video is, is yours to keep. I just ask that you only use it for um, your own personal use with your friends and family if you wanted um, to share with them, but not for any kind of commercial way for paint parties or anything like that. If you guys can see, oh, that one was far away. I keep my little pointer out here sometimes floating around. I don't use it on the brush. Some of the leaves overlap, and I'm just working my way around. Now, maybe you had more than me. Maybe you had less than me. So squish, squish, and I pretty much get paint every one or two leaves. And then these I'm going to do a little smaller because they're just tucked in here a little bit. Okay. Upside down again. Okay. 
And you can see sometimes I go back and forth and sometimes I do all one side and then the other side. Okay. So we have that layer in there now. Okay. So now while still not washing my brush, I'm going to pick up a little bit of yellow. I'm just going to put it on the corner. And we have like a little bit of moss up in our basket. So I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to use the corner of my brush with the green and the yellow. And see how I'm making these curlies? We pick up a little bit more green, a little bit more yellow, and I'm just scrubbing. And then I'll tip my brush, turn my brush around. And I'm just scrubbing with the corner of my brush. And these will hang down a little bit. And we will just fill in. This way I said it's not, try not to get, um, hung up in how your basket looks because it's literally in the background. With time we start adding in our flowers and our leaves and our mosses, you'll know it's a basket, but you won't be worried about the littlest thing that was bothering you before because now you can't even see that. And again, I'm just using the corner. My, my brush got a little crazy hair, so I wanted to fix it. And I'm just using the corner, and I'm doing a scrubbing motion. I'm going to pick up a little bit more yellow, and I'm going to scrub and scrub across the top and down the bottom of my basket. I got a little light over here. I could pick up some green on the other corner and start scrubbing that in here. Okay, that's it. That's what we got right now. Beauty, beauty, beauty. Okay, washing my brush now. When I wash my brush, I like to squeeze my brush in between two paper towels to make sure all the water has gotten out. Um, you don't want to hold your brush up and have water that was up here in this metal part drip down into your project. Okay, so now we are going to work on the centers of our flowers. I'm going to go to my little brush for this. And I'm going to pick up the dark brown and the black. And mine have lost their shape, but that's okay. They're ovals. And I'm going to start dotting in the centers of my flowers. And this is part of the, what I was saying before. If I had my flowers the right size, and then I start dotting in, I was like, ooh, it's a little off on that side. Ooh, it's a little off on that side. Before you know it, my one flower would take over my whole basket. So I have learned that when I add elements, I trace them in much smaller. That one has a little too much black, so I'm gonna pick up some brown. And I'm just dabbing. You don't wanna overshade. You don't wanna to mix too much or blend too much. I am just in here dabbing in these oval centers of my sunflowers with the black and the dark brown. A little more brown. They will even look like a little 3D-ish because the paint is a little thick. Okay, so we have the centers, our blobby centers. And I'm going to wash that brush. Okay, put that aside. Now I'm going back to my big brush again. And I need a little fresh white. Let me put a little fresh white out here. So I have enough. Okay. You'd be surprised how much paint you really don't need. Okay, so I'm going to go into my yellow. This yellow is a little 
translucent, so I'm going to pick up some white with it. And that's all I did. I dipped the corner of my brush, and now I'm mixing in my yellow here. We're still going to have a really vibrant yellow, but this way it's not as translucent as it was. And I have my brush, and I'm just going to come up here. I'm going to butt against the center, and I'm just going to start pulling out my um, petals. That's it. So you can do them this way, or you can do them on the flat like I did. It's up to you. This is just, if you do it on the, um, the squishy one, that's just, we're doing a little bit longer of a stroke than we did for our leaves, okay? And we're going to do everything. We're saving this middle one, that's gonna be our focal one. We're saving that one for last, so we don't wanna go over that center. We'll have a lot of overlap. Oh, sorry, went off. We'll have a lot of overlap with most of our flowers and obviously with our basket but we don't want that much overlap with our middle flower. Okay, then I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna pick up white, and I'm gonna go back over a little bit more white, all of my petals. Okay, then I need more yellow. And I'm never washing my brush. Got my paint brush in my mouth. I'm never washing my brush now. I'm going to go back into the yellow. There's plenty of white on our brush. And I'm going to go in and I'm just doing like we did with our leaves. I'm squishing. But this time I'm keeping my brush squished a little bit longer. So these are longer. And I'm going around my flowers. And like I said, now we can have a little overlap. I got some black on there because my center wasn't dry. We can have some overlap. I'm gonna try not to overlap this one because this is gonna be our focal one, okay? I don't mind having overlap with the others as I work my way around. But with the one in the middle, it's gonna be our focal flower. I'm trying not to have so much overlap. And again, I'm going back into the white and I'm just coming in here. I'm going over each of my flower, each of my flower petals with the white. And here I picked up some of that black from the center before but now that I've fixed it with the white, you can't even see it. You don't even know. Again, not washing the brush, but just going in. Okay, back to my yellow, and then we're gonna work on this one. That's why I said there's plenty of overlap going on, but we want this one to be in the front. So when we get to that one, that one's gonna be front and center. And that's where we're gonna have, that one's gonna overlap all the rest. And you see, I'm turning, turning, turning. And just I'll pull these out a little bit. Oh, that one could go across there. And then I don't want there, okay? And I'll go back to the white and I'll start adding in white on this one. And the white is not giving total coverage. It's just shining up our petals a little bit. Okay. Now I want to let this dry. You could hit it with a hair dryer if you want. You can take a break for five minutes, but we're gonna 
let that dry and I'm gonna go back to my liner brush and I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the white and I'm just going to tap in here and give our centers a little bit of a highlight so you can see where the sun is coming from. And we like to wait for our centers to dry a little bit before we go in and do this. There we go. So now if you're impatient or you let your project dry, we're gonna go back in here and now this flower is going to overlap all the rest. And we're just gonna work our way around it. If you wanted more petals on yours, you can go back in and add some petals in between. That's up to you. And I pick up fresh yellow with every flower petal. And even though we have all of the same colors going on in here, you can see that this one flower is on top. Okay? And again, I'm just gonna wipe off my brush a little bit because I picked up some of the center of the black. And I'm gonna go back in here and lighten these up with the white. I don't know if you guys can hear my cat. She's probably hungry. Okay. Now some of these went over my center a little bit, so I want to bring my center back out. See how some of my petals overlapped in here? So I'm just going to come in here because this is the focal point. The rest are kind of covered up. I'm going to come in here, and I'm just going to tap, tap, tap around my petals and kind of set them back. Okay. And I'm gonna pick up some nice fresh white. And with the back of my brush now, the other end, I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna add in some white dots. And these are just fillers. These are just um, to draw your eye away. These are just, if you have a spot, that you think needs a little something or there's not enough background going on in there. I'm just going to add these little white dots. You may not need them. I don't really totally need them, but I'm showing you guys how I do them. There we go. I think I'm going to take a little bit of white here too and I'm going to highlight a little bit the bottom of my basket. There we go. And there we have it. So what do you guys think? Let me turn you around. Thank you very much. Oh, sun setting. So it's a hard angle. Thank you very much for joining me um, for this bicycle tutorial. I have a huge library. There's probably about 20 videos in my art kit library um, tutorial with my videos and stuff. So you can find me on Facebook or at my website, Teresa Silhouettes, uh, The Silhouette Spot. Facebook is Teresa Silhouette Spot. But you can find me at my website at um, thesilhouettespot.com. Thank you for joining me, and um, I hope you enjoyed your art. Thanks again.